Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this Hurricane Douglas discussion for July 22nd, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, it would really be nice if you guys did hit that subscribe button. I mean, I really cannot believe that I hit 800 subscribers already, so thank you guys so much. And we're on our way to 900 and eventually, even more exciting, the big 1,000 subscribers. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as ringing the bell notifications so you will not miss my next video. Also, please do watch the whole video because this does help my channel grow significantly. So please do watch the whole video and liking and sharing this video as well. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. And this is Hurricane Douglas. It has become a hurricane recently. All right, it does have currently sustained winds of 80 miles per hour here. And it will possibly become a major hurricane by Thursday morning, if not Thursday afternoon. This will likely become a hurricane, major hurricane in the short term here. And even make landfall in Hawaii, in the Big Island, or just north of the Big Island of Hawaii, as a hurricane. But regardless, this could be a Hawaii landfall here. It is a hurricane or a very strong tropical storm. So Hawaii, watch out, because in about four days or so, in a few days, Hawaii could be impacted significantly by Hurricane Douglas. Uh, moving west at 16 miles an hour right now, um, it's very shortly making that more northwest turn, because if it goes west, it stays a little bit farther south, and that would mean it would encounter even more warm waters, which would be bad for Hawaii. Um, so yeah, uh, 80 mile an hour state winds, moving west at 16 miles per hour here. If we take a look at it on the on tropical tippets here, again, 70 knots, about 80 mile an hour winds, Pressure down to 990 millibars. Radius of circulation is 210 nautical miles. You'll be able to see the um, satellite loop in a bit. All right, actually, let's take a look at it right now. So this is what Hurricane Douglas looks like on satellite, and it looks pretty impressive. All right, it's not necessarily an eye yet because it just got named a Category 1 hurricane. So, But you can definitely see, I mean, it's great. We got some great outflow boundaries here. This, all right, we definitely got a lot of convection. A uh, little eye is trying to develop. It's trying very hard to develop. All right, but... It's, it's not quite getting there, but there's a lot of convection. There's definitely that swirl there. This looks like a very decent hurricane. We got, again, you got your outflow boundaries here that are developing outside the storm system. So the storm looks very uh, healthy on the satellite imagery. Not battling too much wind shear, which is good news. All right. Uh, let's take a look at our, make sure refresh is here. Yeah, this is our, our current storm position. If you want, if you're one of those people that likes exact coordinates, well, you come to the right place. All right, about 130.3 degrees degrees west and about 12 degrees north by rough estimate here. So you can see how we're pretty far south because 10 degrees north is pretty close to the equator, and it's not too far north from 10 degrees north. So this is pretty far south for now. Now here's Hawaii right here, and all the model tracks agree. Pretty, about 97 percent of the model tracks agree that this will um, make landfall in Hawaii at some point in about four to five days or so, but mostly about five days out. Um, so Hawaii, be on high alert. Even if this passes just north of you, or even if it passes just south of you, there will be big waves and even some rain and wind nonetheless. Even if it passes just to your north or just to your south, there will still be a lot of wind and waves and rain here. Uh, let's take a look at our GEFS tracks. As you can see, Pressure could be dropping, maybe closer to 990 uh, over 48 hours, so it could strengthen a little more than it is now. Uh, it will be weakening as it heads towards Hawaii, but the question is, how much does it weaken? If it weakens less, then Hawaii gets hit a lot worse. So that's something we're going to be watching as well. But once it passes Hawaii here, um, I definitely think that it's going to start to weaken majorly. It might even be down to a weak tropical storm, if not a tropical depression by that point. Now, how about those GEPS tracks? Let's take a look at those. Because a lot of them have it hitting Hawaii as well. You can see how many model tracks there are. And pretty much all of them, I'd say about a good 98% or so, have them hitting Hawaii. Now, the pressure, we're not quite sure yet. Right now, they're saying about 1,007 millibars, which is still a tropical storm. But I think they could possibly be a Category 1 hurricane too. And if the storm center tracks in a motion like this over the next 10 days, it could even get caught up with a jet stream. And it might get carried back towards the northwest United States or the western United States. All right, by maybe a couple weeks after that. So... But that, I mean, that's not something to do with the storm, really. But the storm could be tracking towards Hawaii, and Hawaii could be impacted. So that's why we'll be keeping you guys updated on this. Uh, definitely something we're going to have to watch. As you can see by the model intensity guides, a lot of models actually do have it becoming a Category 3 hurricane at some point. I don't think Category 4 is too likely. 
All right, the RI40, was, all these RI models look pretty new here. RI40 takes it closer to Cat 4, but no model actually makes it to Cat 4. As you can see, it will become a Category 3 Hurricane at its strongest. And then as has, maybe this is when it hits Hawaii, somewhere around here, around the border between a Category 1 or a Tropical Storm. And then it just drops eventually about a week, maybe maybe 10 days will become a Tropical Depression, kind of dropping below the Tropical Storm category. But you can see that at some point, this could potentially, it has a decent chance to become a major hurricane. This would be the first hurricane, I believe, for the Eastern Pacific, maybe the second, but I think it's the first hurricane, and but definitely going to be the first major hurricane if it does become a Category 3 hurricane. That I know for sure. Now, here's the MSLP loop, and as you can see, this storm looks very healthy. All right, this is actually from 2 p.m. You can see how close the pressure lines are together. You got your rain. Um, there's no, there's not an eye yet, so it's not fully organized. All right, that that the storm will have to work on. But look how much the pressure drops. Just by advancing to 8 p.m., you can see from the GFS model, the pressure drops to 978. We might develop a little eye. The rain looks like it's on the eastern side of the system, which looks pretty good. All right, it looks pretty organized. Uh, look how the pressure drops to 977. Okay, as we head towards 2 a.m. Friday, and it de and now we're starting to develop a little eye maybe in the center there. You can really can't really see it. All right, but this looks like a very healthy storm. And look how strong it is when it hits the wide. Look at all. Look at the pressure lines, 995, and look at all that very heavy rainfall coming right over the big island here, and even the island just to the north end as well. But you can see once it passes Hawaii, though, it pretty much falls apart. 1,006 millibars or so. Um, so that'll be some good news. I mean, I mean. That it will weaken, but like I said, if it impacts Hawaii and it's still a strong system, then then Hawaii could be in a lot of trouble. So let's look at the rainfall totals for Hawaii. It's gonna take about 168 days out here. Um, as you can see, if I would, because this is the closest one I can really find to Hawaii, so I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. Um, as you can see, the northeastern corner of the Big Island could even see six to eight inches of rainfall. All right, but even on the along the storm's path here. All right, we're looking at a good, a good steady two to six inches along this whole storm's path. You can see where it's tracking. But look, once it passes Hawaii, there's only no footprint of this thing. Before, there was like a clear footprint. Hits Hawaii, dumps about two to eight inches of rain, three to eight inches. Then it pretty much just almost falls apart because moving over to land. Remember, Hawaii is very mountainous, so it's easy for this thing to fall apart. Now, take a look at the winds. The winds could get pretty strong with this. The top right or top center corner of your screen, you'll be able to see the maximum sustained winds. And look at this. 85 miles an hour. That's a pretty strong Category 2 hurricane. All right. It's not a huge storm system, but I think it is uh, a pretty intense one, and I think that's what matters. But even when it hits Hawaii, ah, look at this. 64 knots. That is a Category 1 hurricane. You can see right there, it, when it hits Hawaii, it could even be a Category, barely, but a Category 1 hurricane when it hits Hawaii here. So then once it passes over Hawaii, it's back to just a barely a tropical storm, if not tropical depression. So as you can see, though, the winds are looking pretty intense with this system. How is this going, how is this going to look on a satellite imagery? Now, I know, obviously, like I said, you're going out in time. It's going to be a little blurry, but look at this. Look at your eye of this hurricane right here. you got your out, your significant outflow boundaries. All right, this thing looks very, very organized here. you got your perfect, um, it looks very asymmetrical or very symmetrical here. So it looks like a very, looks like a very healthy storm here. All right, then it'll start to weaken once it towards Hawaii. But other than that, though, you, I mean, you can still see we got these huge, heavy bands of rainfall, a clear, evident eye. You can see all the way down to the gray parts, which is pretty much at the surface, which is definitely, which definitely means the storm looks very organized. All right, then it starts heading towards Hawaii later on, right here, and you can see now it looks more like Tropical Storm Fay a little bit, where it kind of looks like more of a Tropical Storm. We still got a little hook in there, but it's not like an eye. But this could even be like it's kind of how it looks right now if you think about it. You can't really see an eye, but it's but it's swirling around, but there's no eye yet. I think that this is how it might look when it hits Hawaii. All right, so that's something we're going to have to watch, too. How about the cyclonic vorticity signature? Definitely something to look at, too. Look how strong this is. It doesn't look too big, but you got a lot of cyclonic energy right in the middle of that storm system there. Um, and that's going to be key for when this hits Hawaii, because when this storm comes on, you're going to have these little bands of energy that's just going to come off of Hawaii that can generate even more rain and even more wind. Um, along with Hurricane Douglas itself. That's what happens anytime a low comes on here like that. And even after it passes through, you're going to have these little bands, these little tiny bands of energy that come off of Hawaii. It could be because of the mountainous terrain. It could be the rain flowing down the mountains, but definitely a lot of cyclonic energy being picked up on, on the uh, radar here nonetheless. So there's your landfall on Hawaii. According to the GFS model, that could happen 
early morning between like 1 and 4 a.m. on Monday. We could have a landfall, as GFS model says so far. One of the reasons this storm could be pretty strong, look at the next five days. Look how much the wind shear, how much less wind shear we're going to have here. Wind shear could go 10, even up to 20 or so knots below average. And the less wind shear we have, the better it is for the hurricane. All right. Even through the next, even through the next week, this entire region here to the east of Hawaii, to the west of Hawaii, all have some very low wind shear amounts, or at least far below average. All right, which is good for strengthening a tropical storm, but it's bad for people who live in Hawaii. So if you live in Hawaii, definitely it is not too early to um, to start preparing now. You got any family or friends who live in Hawaii, definitely let them know that Hurricane Douglas could be coming for them. It will pretty much have impacts regardless. Whether it's a lot of rain and wind, it could be waves. This is why we're tracking the system now. Thank you for keeping it to the weather dude here as we continue to track Hurricane Douglas to get the latest forecast on it. And as you can see by the um, to see surface temperature anomalies that it's not bad. All right, it's pretty much average. We got a little cool spot here, um, but overall we do have some slightly ab above average sea surface temperatures, and especially when it zeroes in on Hawaii, that's where even more warm water could be taking place, e uh, even more above average ocean temperatures. But that's why it's going to be weakening a little bit. Water temperatures will be in the 70s. All right, so that that could be weakening the storm a little bit. But notice why we saw a little brief. Um, GFS said it was going to be just about a Category 1 hurricane when it made landfall in Hawaii. It briefly spiked up the strength real quick. Why? Because it's going to enter those 80-degree waters again. But once it passes over Hawaii, once it gets over that mountainous terrain, it doesn't matter how small Hawaii is. Once it passes over, it's got no chance because of all that mountainous terrain. Even though it's going to be entering after that very warm waters that in this region, it just doesn't survive well. Uh, there is a little bit of wind shearing out past west of Hawaii as well. So that is a factor. Now... How about the ship's diagnostic message here for Hurricane Douglas? And as you can see, as I showed you earlier, there is no wind shear to be found at all. Up, like, up until we get a, maybe about four days out or so, we'll start to see some wind shear come back. Uh, as it heads slightly closer to Hawaii, maybe close to 30 knots of wind shear after it starts leaving Hawaii. All right, so that's, where, that's why I said it could be weakening afterwards as well. But right now, I've got very warm waters. Then it starts to fall to 25. Then it goes back up 27 for landfall. It gets even warmer after the storm leaves. So it's going to have some pretty warm waters the entire way, almost 80 degrees on um, the entire way, but we're going to fall below that for um, a day or so. Now, how, how about that storm speed? Again, that's the good thing about this. It's moving at a good clip the whole way through, or at least according to the GFS version of this. So it's moving at about close to 17, maybe at its, maybe after it leaves Hawaii, could even be starting to move close to 20 miles an hour. So this thing will be, it's not the fastest moving we've seen, but it's definitely, it's not a record mover, but it is moving decently fast. Um, so here is your heat content now. Again, right now, sitting in some good heat content. As it gets closer to Hawaii, our heat content goes down. And again, there's warmer ocean waters after at least Hawaii. We'll start to get a little bit more heat content back, but it won't be coming back with as much of a vengeance um, as, we, as we have right now. Now, looking at the gem model here, uh, taking a look at how the storm could evolve. Um, they have a little bit on the weaker side, all right? But that does not matter. This could still be a very intense storm. Um, they keep it more tropical storm, up, upper tropical storm, lower category one hurricane level. Looks organized like a category one hurricane. It does have the low pressure like a category one hurricane. Looks pretty organized. Um, does fall to 1,000 millibars of pressure. Then maybe hits Hawaii is barely a tropical storm. So the models, as you can see, the bigger models are kind of disagreeing with each other right now. They're like, no, I'm right. No, I'm right. All right, so, but taking a look, it could still get pretty strong here. I mean, nonetheless, still, I mean, 50 knots of wind here is nothing to mess around with. That's still 60 mile an hour, uh, 60 mile an hour winds, which is definitely upper tropical storm force. So, but even when it hits Hawaii, look at this. We still even could have a tropical storm when it hits Hawaii. And so whether, whether it's a tropical storm or a category one hurricane, this will still be bringing a lot of rain potentially to Hawaii. Um, if not at minimum, some, some big wind and waves, uh, some large amounts of wind, we got some waves, maybe some rainfall as well. Um, let's take a look at the uh, rainfall with the gem model for Hawaii because I'm interested to see how much rainfall they have for Hawaii. Um, they have a little bit less than the GFS, but still, all this, all the islands here could even get two to four inches of rain, maybe not six, seven, eight inches. You can still see there's an evident footprint of where the storm was, but we can still see upwards of four inches of rain for Hawaii. And we know with that mountainous terrain there, that even an inch of rain can it could just be a, a nightmare for Hawaii. All right. Now, how about the cyclone vorticity signature? All right, so as you can see, not as much as the GFS had it, it's losing a little bit of its energy as it moves closer to Y, which is what all the models are saying.
But still, when it collides with that, these little bands of energy that develop off of Hawaii, these little bands here, once it collides with that, the energy that it generates, it's basically colliding with it, with, it, with its, let's, let's put it this way, it's colliding with the energy that it generated itself. All right, so then it kind of takes that energy off of Hawaii, these little bands that developed off of Hawaii, it takes that with it, it steals it as its last bit of energy before it will sadly die off later. All right, over the next five, six, seven days, and then the storm system gone completely. All right, so there's your cyclonic vorticity signature, and finally the um, sea surface, uh, the wind shear anomalies are going to be 10, 20, even close to 30 knots of wind shear below average. So at least the wind shear is low, which means the storm's going to be a little stronger. Um, but your only prayer is if if you're living in Hawaii and you want the storm to just disappear, you're going to have to hope for some more wind shear and the colder water because those are the two things that can really knock this storm out because there's not too much dry air to be seen at all. So, thank you guys for watching today's video. Be sure to go on my channel and watch all three uploads for today. Depending on when you're watching this, all three may not be out yet, but they will be very soon. But I do have my three uploads for today, so please consider watching those. I am Dweller Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.